Dios los bendiga. God bless you. Um, I don't want to wait anymore. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if it's anybody else coming, then they will just be be here um, afterwards. So, um, God bless you. It is my, my turn to do the, the, the Bible study. And I was, I was really, truly debating between one, uh, between one Bible study and, and this one today. But um, the opportunity presented itself. And I'm like, okay, I think the Lord wants us to, to go ahead and do this Bible study. Estaba yo debatiendo de, de un estudio bíblico a otro y la oportunidad se presentó a um, hacer este estudio. So, eh, el estudio del día de hoy, today's Bible study, is called Avoiding Bitterness. Today's Bible study, el, el día de hoy, el estudio bíblico, es Evitando Amarguras. Amen. So, uh, vamos a orar. Uh, don't worry about whatever you hear over there, the children. Um, they're going to be okay at some point. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just um, pray. Amen. Pray so the Lord will, will work in us and through us. Vamos a orar para que el Señor trabaje en nosotros y, y a través de nosotros. Amen. Señor Jesucristo, en este momento te estamos pidiendo que tú seas con nosotros, Padre. Señor, te pido que tú bendigas mis labios, que tú bendigas uh, mi mente y de igual manera mi corazón, Señor, para poder transmitir lo que tú estás diciendo a tu pueblo. Lord God, I ask that you please bless my lips, anoint my head with oil, so I will be able to, to transmit or to move forward, to push forward what you want to say to your people. So in the mighty name of Jesus, we anoint our heads with oil from top to bottom. Lord Jesus, I ask that you, that you speak through this Bible study and, and speak to our hearts. En el nombre de Jesús, habla a nosotros, a nuestros corazones. Y en el nombre de Jesús, úngenos de pies a cabeza. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So today's Bible study... Avoiding bitterness. <clears throat> Evitando amarguras. Amen. So, the devil is an expert in spiritual destruction. How many of you know that? First mm -hmm. Peter 5, 8, and then 2 Corinthians 2, 11, and 1 John 2, 16. Um, he makes us, he, he make use of our weakness and we're also going to be reading Matthew chapter 4, verse 2, 3, and then 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 7, 5, and then the immature may experience doubt. Uh, Hebrews 5, 13, and 14, the mature may be more vulnerable regarding bitterness. And then we're going to discuss all this. We will be reading all the scriptures, so don't worry, we will go over them, the actual Vamos a leer todas las escrituras, no se preocupe, vamos a ir otra vez um, por todas las escrituras para que las pueda escribir. El diablo es experto en destrucción, ¿cuántos saben eso? Y se está hablando de destrucción espiritual. Primera de Pedro 5, 8, segunda de Corintias 2, 11, primera de Juan 2, 16, se sirve de la debilidad. Mateo 4, 2, 3, primera de Corintios 7.5 Los inmaduros pueden experimentar dudas. Hebreos 5, 13, 14 Los maduros pueden ser más vulnerables en cuanto a la amargura. So, vamos a hablar de todo eso. Amen. I'll just leave it a little bit longer. In case if you guys writing writing it down. Voy a dejarlo un poquito más mm -hmm. para cuando, para que los puedan escribir. Nomás me dicen amén. Once you say amén, then we'll, we'll move forward. Amén. So the first scripture, the first scripture, 1 Peter 5, 8. And then we'll be reading the other scriptures and I'll be giving them to you. 
La primera escritura, the first scripture said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's 1 Peter 5.8. Primera de Pedro 5.8, practique el dominio propio. Manténgase alerta, su enemigo, el diablo, ronda como león rugiente, buscando a quien devorar. Primera de Pedro 5.8. 2 Corinthians 5.11, 2.11, I'm sorry, is that we might not have Satan get an advantage against us, for we are not ignorant of his thoughts. Segunda de Corintios 2.11, para que no seamos engañados de Satanás, pues no ignoramos sus maquinaciones. It's like God is warning us over and over and over, and he reminding us, remember you have an enemy, remember you have an enemy, and your enemy is not your neighbor, not your mom, not sister so and so, your enemy is the devil, the one you do not see. El Señor nos está recordando una escritura tras otra. Recuerda que tienes un enemigo, el tu enemigo no es la vecina, no es tu hija, no es tu esposo. El, 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 el enemigo no se ve, pero recuérdalo. No más porque no lo ves, no quiere decir que no lo tengas. For everything in the, in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. 1 John 2.16 um, Voy a leerlo en español y luego voy a explicar algo. Porque nada de lo que hay en el mundo, los malos deseos del cuerpo, la codicia, los ojos y la arrogancia de la vida proviene del Padre, sino del mundo. Primera de Juan 2.16 How many of you knew, every time we, we say the scripture, every time we say the scripture, we think, oh, well, you're talking about somebody who prostitutes themselves. Usted quizá diga, esto es alguien de que se prostituye por allá. Está hablando de los gozos de la carne. How many of you know that the, one of the enjoyments of the flesh is you hold, you hold bad feelings against someone? ¿Cuántos sabía de usted yeah. que uno de los disfrutes de la carne, de, esta, de este pedazo de de barro, disfrutes de la carne, es que cuando la persona aguanta el perdón y no quiere perdonar a alguien, that is one, it, it, it's not in your flesh, but it's in your emotions, your emotions is, is attached to your flesh, eso no, es, no se va a ver, porque, porque pues no, no es de carne y hueso, esas emociones, pero las emociones están pegadas a la carne, a este cuerpo, y, uh, That's a luxury. Ese es una, una, um, un lujo. El, ah, oh, no te voy a perdonar. Just the fact that you say, ah, oh, I don't think I'm going to forgive her. That's a luxury. A luxury that we do not have. And yet we asking God to forgive us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Este es un lujo que nosotros nos damos y que le pedimos a Dios que nos dé el perdón. Amen. So this is, that's why the scripture is here. We're talking about avoiding bitterness. And you're like, but we're talking about the lust of the flesh. Do you think your flesh lust over holding forgiveness? You enjoy that. Your emotions is like all over the place. La carne, la emoción de la carne se está lujuriando cuando no le perdona a alguien. Matthew 4, 2 and 3 is in the easy to read version. Jesus ate nothing for 40 days and nights. After this, he was very hungry. The devil came to tempt him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell the rocks to become bread. Mateo 4, 2, 3 en la versión Reina Valera del 60 y después de haber ayunado 40 días y 40 noches, tuvo hambre. Y vino a él el tentador. Y dijo, si eres hijo de Dios, di que estas piedras se conviertan en pan. So, apparently, because Jesus was in his flesh, not even Jesus was saved from the tempter. Como que ni siquiera 
Jesús fue, fue salvado del tentador porque él vivía en la carne. It's like the devil knew, okay, so Jesus is, is in his flesh. There is a chance he might fall for this. But he knew he was talking to the Son of God. Como que el diablo dijo, okay, porque Jesús está en su carne, um, él ya sabía que era el Hijo de Dios, pero dijo, está en su carne, a la mejor, a la mejor puedo tentarlo a que, a que caiga. 1 Corinthians 7.5 Stop depriving one another except by agreement for a, uh, for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer and come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Okay, so this is, um, this is talking about the couple. This is talking about the couple that, um, that the husband and wife, they will... Uh, They will agree, okay, we're not going to be together in this 24 hours or 48 hours because, because I'm going to be fasting, dear husband or dear wife. And, and then they both agree so that way they're not tempted. And many times when we are in that time of prayer or in time of fasting, it's best to stay away from, from things like that because it's, it's things of the flesh and the devil likes to slide and, and ski on the flesh. Amen. Primera de Corintios 7.5 de la versión Reina Valera del 95. No os neguéis, dice, no os neguéis el uno al otro, no ser por algún tiempo mutuo de sentimiento para ocuparos sosegadamente en la oración. Luego volver a juntaros al uno al otro para que, porque no os siente o tiente Satanás a causa de vuestra incontinencia. Está aquí hablando del, del esposo y la esposa, dice no se tienten. Eh, se puede decir que está hablando no se tienten sexualmente uh, o que no, no se nieguen sexualmente si dedican un tiempo para la oración o el ayuno, eh, apártense de sí para que dediquen tiempo para el Señor y el, el diablo no los vaya a tentar. We can also understand this uh, scripture um, about tempting is don't tempt your wife in anger. Don't tempt your husband in anger. Because we never look at that. Nunca miramos esa parte y puede aquí también estar diciendo no tientes a tu esposa a enojo. No tientes a tu esposo a enojo o a tu hijo. Porque porque el diablo está nomás listo para, para agarrarse de allí, right? Because the devil is always ready to prowl like a lion for anybody who, who get angry, for anybody who, and you might be right, but it's still anger. Hebrews 5, 13 and 14, for someone who lives on milk is still an infant and does not know how to do what is right. Solid food, is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. <clears throat> Hebreos 5, 13 al 14. Y todo aquel que participa en la leche es inexperto en la palabra de justicia, porque es niño. Verso 14 dice, el alimento sólido es para los que han alcanzado madurez, para los que por el uso tienen los sentidos ejercitados en el discernimiento del bien y el mal. So it's basically tell us, if you are already mature in Christ, use the maturity in Christ and exercise your self-control. Dice prácticamente, si tú eres maduro en Cristo, usa esa madurez y ejercita tu dominio propio. La definición. So this is definition. What is to be bitter? Is to embitter, to exasperate, i.e., render anger, indignant, to be um, unbitter, irritated. We're going to be reading Colossians 3:19. Now, the Greek word to bitter is pi kria. Ephesians 4:31 and Hebrews 12:15. Amargar, exasperar, es decir, enojar, indignar amargarse, irritarse, 
estaremos hablando también de um, Colosenses 3.19. El griego de la palabra amargar es picría. Efesios 4.31 y Hebreos 12.15. So, we begin with Colossians 3.19. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Eh, comenzaremos con Colosenses 3.19. Maridos, amad a vuestras mujeres y no seas ásperos con ellas. Because what happened when the husband, and, and it's going vice versa also, not just the husband to the wife, but the, the wife to the husband. Because basically it's telling us, remember you have an enemy, and that enemy is just watching. If you make her upset, he's going to go and prowl on her, and, and he's going to, He's going to deceive her, and she's going to be angry, and, and it's going to be bad. <laughs> so basically, um, the Lord is warning us here. This is not just for husband and wife, for wife to husband, but mothers to daughters, mothers to sons, um, daughters to mothers. Basically saying, be careful. Don't be too harsh with people. Be more kind, because that way you don't make the other person vulnerable So Satan can possess them. Aquí lo que está diciendo, no nomás es marido con mujer y mujer con marido, es, es hijo con madre, madre con hijo o hija, um, vecino. No los pientes, um, no los hagas enojar, no seas tan áspero, sé más delicado con tus palabras, porque hay un, hay un enemigo de las vidas de ustedes y ese enemigo está listo para poseer al primer que se enoje. That, that lion is ready to possess the first one who get angry. My mom used to say when we were little, el que se enoja pierde. Mi mamá decía cuando estábamos chiquitos, el que se enoja pierde. Vamos, decía ella, vamos a jugar un juego. Si todo este día, pasa, pasa el día y no te enojas, tú ganas el juego. Y si te enojas, ya perdiste. My mom used to say, let's, let's play a game. Because it was, she was a, a homemaker. She was always at the house raising us children. And children of the corn, wild. And we was always like, um, you know, fighting with each other. It's all children are. And she would see that, that either he will, my brother will fight us or we will fight him. And my mom used to say, okay, let's play a game. By the end of the day, if you don't get angry all day, then you win that game. So I'm just uh, basically remembering that part of my childhood. And it was so wise that she will, she will tell us, remember that if you get angry, you lose, you snooze. Ella nos decía con mucha sabiduría, si tú te enojas, al final del día ya perdiste, ya perdiste. Y el diablo... Ella no nos lo decía, pero ya sé ahora, el diablo nos posee. She will not tell us, but uh, I know now that by the end of the day, if you go all day without getting angry with your spouse, with your children, with your work, school, whatever, then you win the, you win the battle for the day. And what do we win? Um, the devil not posse, pos, possessing us. Ephesians 4.3.1 Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Efesios 4.31 dice, Quítense de vosotros toda amargura, todo enojo, toda ira, toda gritería, toda, mal, toda maldiciencia y toda malicia. So the Bible does say, you, it's normal to get angry. But the Bible says, do not sin in your anger. Dice la Biblia, es, es normal que una persona se enoje porque esa es una emoción. Pero dice, no peques en tu enojo. Do not, get, do not sin in your anger because it's very easy. It's very easy to sin with this, with this mouth. Amen? Let no root of bitterness spring up to trouble. You let you be defiled. Wow, defiled, right? Hebrews 12, 15. Hebreos 12.15 dice, mirad bien para que ninguno deje de alcanzar la gracia de Dios y para que no brote ninguna raíz de amargura 
que os perturbe y contamine a muchos. So, en inglés dice, para que no te, te, te dañes, eh, usa la palabra defile, que es defile, es como una palabra en español, no, no puedo conseguir la, la, la traducción, pero es una palabra que, que contamina, como que se llena de suciedad. Eh, to me, the, the word defile is stronger than what the explanation could be in Spanish, but it's just like... Feel with, this is how I would look at it, feel with feces. Just just feel with contaminated, just uh, feel with yuck. Verse 19, husbands love your wives and be not bitter against them. Colossians 3.19 God knew how petty and thry, trying some women ways will be when he said this, in the power of the new life one may manifest patience and grace under the most trying circumstances and not suffer himself to become exasperated. This is uh, Colossians again 3.19. Maridos, amad a vuestras mujeres y no seáis amargados con ellas. Dios sabía cuán mezquinos y difíciles serían eh, el comportamiento de algunas mujeres. Cuando digo esto, en el poder de la nueva vida, uno puede manifestar paciencia y gracia en las circunstancias más difíciles y no permitirse exasperarse. Now, I did mention the women. Um, women could be like this, but it, I'm talking about men too. Um, the reason why it says a lot about women is because we women, we wear our, our feelings in our sleeves, as uh, Brother Abraham always saying, Pastor Calvin always saying. And, and it's true, we, we're more sensitive than men, but I've seen some sensitive parts of, of men that is, is, is not attractive either. So it's, it's for both, okay? It's not, I'm not just banging on women or, or banging on men, it's just for both. Why? Because we both are in this flesh. No normal estoy echando las mujeres, estoy hablando de los dos porque los, los dos estamos en esta carne. Amen. Only a few will stand and keep on stand against the sin and false doctrine. Now, um, I'm going to speak about this because I will, today I was like, oh, oh my goodness, God just gave me a wow moment. Knowing this can help us avoid extreme letdown and then two, often bitterness and resentment to follow. Okay, I'm going to say this in Spanish and then I'll go back. Solo unos pocos se levantarán y seguirán resintiendo el pecado y la falsa doctrina. Sobre esto puede ayudarnos a evitar una decepción extrema y con demasiada frecuencia si... La siguiente, um, la siguiente amargura y resentimiento. El, um, in today, today it, it just kind of hit me in a, in a very powerful way. I was like, okay, okay, God, why, why are you talking about, um, okay, I'm going to go back. Why, I was over here thinking, why is God talking about people that fall, that fall for false doctrine saying that those people are more vulnerable to become bitter, to become more extreme with their emotions, to become more weak, more, more, um, as my son will say, more beta. <laughs> because somebody that falls into false doctrine is, is already going the wrong path. Amen? Because the, the good, healthy doctrine is the right path. So if you go in the right path, the Lord will alert you with all kinds of flags and, and tell you, okay, this is not right, that's not okay, this is not okay, so check yourself and fix yourself. But somebody who's already fall, fallen for, a, for false doctrine, it'd be more sensitive. And it, talking about men and women, he, he or she'd be more susceptible to be offended. And we see that in the world all the time, amen? 
yo estaba pensando, Señor, ¿por qué aquí tú nos estás diciendo que aquellos que caen, que no resisten la falsa doctrina y han caído por la falsa doctrina? Porque, ¿qué es lo que tiene que ver la falsa doctrina con las emociones? Y el Señor el día de hoy como que me tiró un machetazo en la frente. El Señor me dijo, aquellos que han caído en la falsa doctrina son esas personas que ya van por el, por el camino ancho, por el camino que es, que es fácil, por el camino malo. Y eh, por eso ellos son más susceptibles a ser sensitivos, ofen se ofenden con cualquier cosa, se ofenden con mundo y rey mundo. Aunque no les diga nada, aún así se ofenden. Se ofenden si les dicen, se ofenden si no les dicen. A lot of people uh, who already are in the wrong path and already um, under false doctrine, they will be so offended if you say hello, oh, how you say hello, or if you don't say hello. So they will be offended no matter what. And, and this, that's basically the world right now. Everybody's offended, amen? Ahorita todo el mundo está ofendido. También enfatice en Timoteo, en Timoteo 2, 4, que el Señor le pague según sus obras. I don't know why I didn't translate this in, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go ahead and read it. So, 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Eh, voy a leerlo en español y luego lo voy a leer en inglés. I will read it in Spanish and then in, in English. Um, el Señor pagará según sus obras. Verso 14. Alejand Alejandro el Caldero me hizo mucho daño. El Señor le dará la recompensa de sus obras. Pero estad atent atento a él porque atacaba violentamente vuestras enseñanzas. En mi primera reunión con mis jueces, ninguno se puso de mi parte, sino que todos se alejaron de mí, que no se, que no se les cargue en su cuenta. 17. Pero el Señor estuvo a mi lado y me dio fuerzas para que por mí se difundiera la noticia en toda su plenitud y todas las naciones escucharán. Y yo fui sacado de la boca de León. So I'm going to try to read um, that in out loud in in English. Uh, Second Timothy because I actually thought I had it in Second Timothy chapter 4. I will read 14 through 17. Amen. Alexander has um, the copper coppersmith did a great harm to me. The Lord will repay him according to his works. Watch out for him yourself because he strongly oppressed, is oppressed, oppressed with words. In my first defense, no one stood by me, but everyone deserted me. May, may, may it not be con counted against me. Verse 17, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the proclamation might be fully made through me and all the Gentiles might be heard so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Isn't this so powerful? So basically, um, this person, Alex, offended um, Brother Timothy. He offended him here and he put this in the scripture. He, he offended him and, and he said, but I'm, but I'm trying to forgive him because if, I, if it wasn't because the Lord stood by me and others did not stood by me, but if it wasn't because the Lord stood by me, basically saying, if I would have let that offense get to me, I would not even preach to y'all. I would not even bring the gospel forward. And he was one of the one of the, uh, the peoples that, that went out to certain areas of, um, to preach the gospel. He was basically covering a side of the world preaching the gospel. Do you see how bad could be when we get offended? When we get offended, God say, okay, you, you on your own. You, you offended, you're not willing to give me your offense. Okay, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to use you how I was going to use you. 
So you lose the privilege and those who was going to be saved by the words that was going to come out of your mouth, that it was going to be me, will not be saved. So to me, it was like a wow moment. I was like, wow, I do have a lot to lose and others have a lot to lose if I get angry, if I let this, these feelings, you know, run wild. Si yo dejo que esos sentimientos eh, estén, estén vulgarmente se vayan a lo loco, eh, nadie se salva. Enter to the, through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life and only few find it. So how many of you know that if you try not to get angry, walk away from the fight, and you know, turn down the, the fire, how many of you know that that's the narrow gate? Because it's way easier to, to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it's more, much more easier than, and that becomes the Y gate. ¿Cuántos de ustedes saben que el El no pelear y el perdonar es la puerta estrecha. Aquí en Mateo 7.13 dice la puerta angosta, entran por la puerta angosta porque ancha es la puerta y espacioso el camino que lleva a la perdición y muchos son los que entran por ella. That means right now in the world is many are walking through, through the white gates because everybody is offended, everybody. Remember we all sin and fall short of God's glory. Recuerde que todos pecamos y estamos destituidos de la gloria de Dios. 1 John 1. If we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his words, his word in, is not in us. Si decimos que no tenemos pecado, que no engañamos, nos engañamos a nosotros mismos y la verdad no está en nosotros. Si confesamos nuestros pecados, Él es fiel y justo para perdonarnos nuestros pecados y limpiarnos de toda maldad. Si decimos que no hemos pecado, le hacemos mentiroso y su palabra no está en nosotros. <coughs> so the same, this is the same, just a different version. Esto es lo mismo y es diferente versión. Trials and difficulties develop patience and perfection. How many of you know that? So if I don't have a trial, I will stay as a baby. Si, ¿Cuántos de ustedes sabían que las pruebas y las dificultades desarrollan paciencia y la perfección y nos maduran? Quiere decir que si no tuviera dificultades, si no tuviera um, pruebas, me quedaría como bebé. You will see a lot of grown people walking around with diapers because they never have a difficulty or because they didn't, they didn't endure it. You have to endure it. Don't, don't run from it because that's, that's like a medicine. It's a medicine to grow up. Amen? And I, and I know it's easier said than done, but I feel like the Lord said, you have to say it because it's part of the Bible study. Yo sé que esto es más fácil decirse que hacer, pero el Señor me decía, dilo, porque es parte del estudio bíblico. Las dificultades nos desarrollan madurez. Las pruebas nos desarrollan madurez y crecemos de esa manera. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing that this, that he, the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye might be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And this is um, James 1, verse 2, 3, 4. Este es Santiago. Santiago, capítulo 1, verso 2, 3 y 4. Hermanos míos, tened por sumo gozo cuando caigáis en diversas tentaciones, 
sabiendo que esto, esto es la prueba de vuestra fe produce paciencia, pero dejar que la paciencia tenga su obra perfecta para que seas perfectos e íntegros sin que os falte nada. <coughs> Praise God, amen. This, this is truly like the word of God is, is, is this knife that once it pierces through, if you push it back, if you're trying to pull it out, it cuts up and down. La palabra de Dios dice que es una espada de dos filos, que ya cuando entró, si tratas de quitarte, la te va a cortar también. So, once the word of God gets in, don't take it out. Because it will, it's going to cut you anyway. Amen? So just take it. Take it. The word of God says that we will grow. And that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to grow. A way of escape is always provided by God's promise. Siempre hay una vida vía de escape. Dios lo ha prometido. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. How many of you heard that scripture? Primera de Corintios 10, 13. Okay, 1 Corinthians has no temptation taken you by such, an, such as is common to men. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above ye are bearable. But be with temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear. So God will get us through. He always does. No es, no os ha sobrevenido ninguna tentación que no sea humana, pero fiel es Dios, que no os dejará ser tentados más de lo que podéis soportar, sino que dará también con la tentación la salida para, po, para que podáis soportar. Many, um, I know that many of you may say this because I've heard it from many people, but I've said this to Pastor Calvin and he said it to me, God must be thinking that I'm some kind of incredible hope or something because it's like one after another after another. I'm like, oh my goodness, you really think, you really think the best of me. El pastor Calvin y yo le digo a él y él me dice a mí que yo creo Dios cree que, que, que nosotros tenemos una, una piel bien gruesa que, que hemos estado aguantando bastante porque si no es una prueba es otra. Y si no es otra, es una, y se, y se alternan. So, but God is faithful, because look at us, we're still here, right? Amen. Amen. Going to God in prayer, asking Him to help us remove all that He don't like, because that is His will, and that will hurt us eternally. Como que, it's like, um, I'm going to go ahead and say this in Spanish, And then, and then my peace. Acudiendo a Dios en oración, pidiendo que nos ayude a eliminar todo lo que a Él no le gusta, porque eso es lo que nos hará daño eternamente. It's like God is saying, Honey, I'd rather for you to cry right now for five minutes and not for you to cry in eternity. ¿Ok? Como que el Señor dice... Mi, mi amor, prefiero que tú llores aquí por cinco minutos y no que llores por, por una eternidad en el infierno. Amén. Be careful for nothing but in everything, but put everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. This es Filipenses 4, 6, y 7. Tengáis cuidado, sino que en todo, mediante en oración, pon todo en, todo en oración y súplica, con acción de gracias, sean dadas a conocer vuestras peticiones a Dios, y la paz de Dios que sobrepasa todo entendimiento, guardará vuestros corazones y vuestros pensamientos en Cristo Jesús. So, you see us putting prayer requests in the box? It's biblical. The Lord is saying, put everything, put, give everything to God, and God will give you peace. Um, I don't know if you have experienced it, but every time I put the prayer over here, I'm like, oh, at least I give it to Him. Cada vez cuando yo pongo la petición, Mía, 
ah, la escribo aquí en la cajita, digo, ay, gracias a Dios, ya se la entregué al Señor. Ya está en manos del Señor. I don't have to carry it anymore. Praise God for that. Some content that the only way we can, we can avoid bitterness is to produce watered down first century Christianity. Unity is diversity, unity in diversity and denial of basic doctrinal facts. Not so. A Christian can be a realist and still not be bitter. Algunos sostienen que la única manera de evitar la, la amargura es producir un cristianismo diluido del primer siglo, unidad de la diversidad y negociación de los hechos doctrinales básicos. No es así. Un cristiano puede ser realista y aún así no estar amargado. So, I'm going to go over these points and then, and then I, will, I will ask a couple of questions. So the points that we touch over here with a lot of scripture is thanking God for everything. We all sin. Trials results in good. There is a way of escape. And the value of prayer and even greater treasure is forgiveness. Gracias a Dios por dar. Gracias a Dios por todo. Es de lo que hablamos con muchas escrituras. Todos pecamos. Los senderos resultan buenos, hay vía de escape y el valor de la oración. Y más que todo, el tesoro más grande, el tesoro más grande de todas las cosas es que el perdón, el perdón. Amen. So, this is Bible study and it was not a very big one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and just uh, open for some questions because I would like to... Um, ask a few questions, but before we close, I'm going to ask Sister if you can be ready to close. Okay. Um, but before we close, is the only way, because sometimes we say, well, but um, what should you do if you get offended and nobody asks you for forgiveness? Quizás usted pregunte, ¿qué es lo que se puede hacer cuando alguien te ofendió y te sigue ofendiendo? y te sigue ofendiendo, y te sigue ofendiendo, y no te pide perdón. What should you do when this person, they don't even know they're offending you, and they're still offending you. They like dropping to, to the bucket, like they don't realize they're offending you. What should you do? They're not, since they don't realize you, you being offended by it, so either, either you, you tell them, if you already try and it's not working, sometimes it's family, right? Muchas veces cuando te están ofendiendo y ofendiendo y ya trataste de hablar con la persona o simplemente no se puede hablar con la persona. Or maybe simply you just cannot talk to the person because they're difficult or whatever. Well, that's why tons of scriptures here they talk about giving it to God. Giving it to God. God say, hey, I'm here. Hello. I'm here. Why don't you give it to me? Dice, Señor, si yo estoy aquí, ¿por qué no me lo das a mí? Y te lo, si te ofenden todos los días, la misma persona, se lo vas a tener que dar al Señor todos los días. If someone offends you every day, you're going to have to give it to God every day. Why? Because, number one, you're not going to grow up. You will stay in diapers. We will stay in diapers. And if we don't grow up, it's going to keep piling on. And second, we will not be used by the Lord. Número uno, no vamos a crecer si no se lo damos al Señor todos los días. Número dos, va a seguir aumentando y aumentando. Número tres, esto te va a amargar y Dios no te puede usar así. How can, how can God use a dirty vessel? You yourself will first wash a glass of, to drink of water. You will wash that glass. You will not going to drink out of a murky foggy glass. No, you're going to wash it. So God is not going to use us unless we clean ourselves. And I know it's easier said than done, but if you practice it more than often, God is going to get you through it. Si nosotros practicamos esto cada vez y cada vez, Dios nos va a ayudar 
um, acerca de cómo hacerlo. O oh, many times the person say, many times the person say, and then I'm getting ready to close. Many times the person say, okay, um, how can I forgive from the heart if, if the person just offended me? And I don't want to just forgive from my lips. Muchas veces la persona dice, no quiero nomás no, um, perdonar de labios, yo quiero perdonar de corazón. Pero esa persona me ha clavado el corazón. Well, if you give your heart to the Lord, God is going to take care of the heart. Si le damos el corazón al Señor, así de herido, el Señor se va a encargar. But it has to come through your lips. Tiene que salir de tus labios, porque siempre hay dos testigos. Dios está escuchando, el diablo está escuchando. Um, we always have to witness. I always say this to, this to people. We always have to witness. God is listening and the devil is listening. So it's going to have to come through your lips. God, I forgive so and so and so. And it could be a hundred people. But you have to say it. God will help you from the heart. Amen. Tú no puedes cambiar tu corazón. Dios puede cambiar tu corazón. Tiene que salir de tu boca para que Dios cambie el corazón y sea sincero. Amen. So, God bless you. And I'm going to ask uh, Sister if, um, if she can go ahead and um, close our video. Um, we will see you again Sunday. Remember, we record this 24 hours from the day that it was. Um, it, this is Friday evening. We'll see you again in Sunday, our, our services at 12. God bless you.